guys, welcome back to my channel. day for me because I am celebrating something and I would like you to join me in this mini celebration that I am having right now and I think it's the perfect time to have a story time about how I first got into this industry so let this video begin but first of all before we begin this video let's go transition to our party area what is party without some decoration on and what is party without food so let's go and jump into our party place and time for a quick montage something special or I could say it's a milestone for me and yep that celebration is my third year in the aviation industry basically my third year in the company that I'm in and for me that is a, a milestone because this by far is the longest I've been employed in one single company and yeah, you cannot judge me. I'm still 25. No, I'm just 24, guys. Oh my gosh. I don't even remember my age now. So, uh, without further ado, let me just um, share with you what I've prepared for my mini celebration. So here, let's start with the right, right hand side. So I have here three fruits well to celebrate my third year so these are my favorite one of my favorite fruits because i really do love fruits so we have some grapes we have three apples and three oranges my favorite mug by far since this is uh my birthday present my colleague so it's very pretty because it has c it has my initial on it and of course, it's a celebration without a cake. So I've got here a black forest cake. And yeah, as you can see, guys, it's a small cake because um, nobody is here to help me finish it. So I opted to buy the small one so that I can finish it and not waste food because it's very important not to waste food because there's a lot of people out there that are struggling to find some food to feed themselves. And also, I I, 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 I just came back from Italy and I was not able to eat pasta because it was not in the room service menu and I'm so upset. So I opted to make my own pasta dish. So I have my Filipino style spaghetti, my favorite and shout out to my mom who taught me how to make one. And I assure you guys, if you could taste the spaghetti that I make, you will forever look for it because I assure you, it's very delicious. And of course, I have my favorite one, which is the chicken. So I have here my Filipino style um, fried chicken. So as you can see, it's a little bit dark because I marinated it in a soy sauce. So that's what it is. It's not burnt, it's not burnt, but it's just because I marinated it in a soy sauce. So that's what I've prepared. So a little balloons to light the mood. And before we start um, eating this, of course, uh, I have invited some guests to accompany me in this celebration. And these guests had also accompanied me in my past three years life here in Doha. So these guests are also so dear in my heart. Uh, they accompanied me so uh, I don't feel really much lonely so let me call in my guests I present you my guests 
guests of mine have been accompanying me all throughout this three years stay in my flat so i'm so thankful for all of you guys so we deserve to celebrate our friendship and let's dig in all right where do i begin okay i wanted to begin from the very 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 beginning okay from the very moment that i've heard of the word flight stewardess so i was in my sixth grade that time that i've heard of flight stewardess so living in a province away from the city i can hardly even go to the city before due to that we are not wealthy and the first time i've ever heard of the word flight stewardess was during our class with miss veronica tan when she was asking everybody what we wanted to be when we grow up my childhood is not that really planned like some other kids they really know what they really want when they were still small until they grow up and that's what their goal in life is but for me it's different because i changed my mind a lot of time at first i wanted to become a nurse because i've seen a lot of nurses that became rich and have their own house and that was my dream when i was a kid i wanted to have my very own house so i wanted to become a nurse but unfortunately i am not that strong not that brave enough to look at blood so i was thinking if i become a nurse and i'm gonna be in an operating room where the doctor will ask me to hand him some maybe scissors or some knife to cut open somebody i think i'll pass out <laughs> so it's not a good idea to become a nurse so i opted to try thinking what else do i really want to become when i grow up so I tried to have the passion of teaching. Uh, so I told myself that, yeah, I wanted to become a teacher, but there is a big problem. I don't have the nicest hand penmanship. So even my mom have been scolding me uh, for my hand penmanship. So I was like, okay, it's not good for a teacher to have a bad penmanship because every time you write something on the blackboard your your kids or the students may just laugh at me or maybe my professor during college days would not even understand a word in my lesson plan so it's a big thing so not that one but since we have a bake shop before so i've been thinking yeah maybe i could just be a baker and that also explains my love in baking or being in the kitchen so yeah so i settled for that for some time already uh to become a baker and then when we were uh in the sixth grade when our teacher asked us about it one of my classmates uh said that she wanted to be a flight stewardess but for me that was the first time that i've heard of that word and i really don't know what a flight stewardess is like what does a flight stewardess do that's my main question until she told me that uh, these are flight flight stewardess are the girls that are in the airplane and they travel a lot which makes my eyes go heart 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 when when i've heard of that that flight stewardess travel a and that's the very beginning that I became curious about what a flight stewardess is. Until I did my research and uh, when I was in high school, specifically in third year, our teacher was asking us randomly as well about it. And then uh, I said I wanted to be a flight stewardess. And then she was also sharing some knowledge about flight stewardess or flight attendant and she was saying that you have to be fair you have to have fair skin smooth skin no scars and a perfect set of teeth like perfect set of teeth no missing teeth and i got discouraged because i have a sweet tooth and actually i've got a lot of missing teeth and that's just it's not just visible because it's all at the back side 
Okay, so the ones in the forward are still present and they are uh, they are original guys. <laughs> they are original. I don't have implants. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's my perfect set of teeth. So, but then I didn't let it, let me, let it, uh, what is the word? Okay, but then I didn't let that comment from a teacher or bring me down, like change my career plans again. Until I reach college and I took up tourism because as what I said, I really wanted to be um, a flight stewardess so, or flight attendant, so I would wanted to have a degree in tourism and when I year what year was it okay year 2016 I really I've heard of this flight attendant school in Dumaguete City and I became very curious about it and uh, uh, I've researched about it and seeing those girls in that school wearing their unique uniform i really told myself i i really really wanted to be in that in that uh flight attendant school so i find my ways and yep i am so blessed that i find my ways and i was able to enroll myself in frontier aviation so uh through frontier aviation i had been molded into who i am as a flight attendant i've learned a lot of things that i didn't expect that a flight attendant would do specifically for um, safety purposes a safety function of a flight attendant because as like uh, other people i really just thought that flight attendants are there to serve tea coffee on board but it's not it uh, the main purpose of a flight attendant on board is for the safety and well-being of everybody on board the aircraft. So, I was training hard and at the same time, I was also taking the degree in tourism at Foundation University. So, most of the time, the scenario would be I will be in two uniform in a day. So. Uh, I am in my university uniform and then on my vacant time, I would get inside the FA um, course that I've been doing and so I'm going back and forth from my school to the venue where we are conducting the uh, training. So our instructor had uh, prepared us for a go uh, for a open day application that's happening in the city for Cebu Pacific. So uh, I was so happy because of the comments that he had given me and given the class. And to be honest, I am a person that always see something ahead of me. So I was already so excited because of the comments that he gave me. Uh, I was so excited and I've already told my mom that I'm not going to finish my studies in university because I'm going to be training in Manila for Cebu Pacific already way before I went for the application day itself. And I prepared myself. I did all the waxing that is required to be waxed. I waxed it out. Uh, I had some gluta drip because I wanted to be uh, in lighter shade during the time of the application. And I prepared my CV accordingly and I also prepared what to wear. And I even let some somebody, like let my friend do my makeup for that application day. And we went to the venue very early because early bird catches a worm. But when I was there, uh, there was a lot of girls that are uh, aspiring to be a Cebu Pacific cabin. They gave us numbers and then they call us uh, per batch, like uh, five girls in one batch. And they have a tape on the wall and then they just tell you to turn to your right, turn to your right, turn to your right. And after that, they just send us home because we didn't make it through. 
So I was honestly heartbroken by that because I prepared so well physically, mentally, emotionally. I was so prepared to do the training for Cebu Pacific, so excited to be wearing the uniform and so excited to fly. But my dreams were placed in pause that time. I was I didn't leave the venue same as my um, my classmates. We didn't leave the venue until the very end, like they finish all the uh, recruiting. And it's just so sad that I've prepared and they didn't even ask for my name. They didn't even let me speak for myself and let me speak what I can offer to them. So, I was so sad. It was just so sad that makes me want to eat my pasta. <laughs> so yeah, I was so sad and I almost gave up on on the thought of being a flight attendant. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, but not giving up on the thought of eating the spaghetti. <laughs> Because it cooled down, that's why the noodles is stuck to itself. Okay. Yep, that's it. I'm gonna mix it and eat it. Okay, so where was I? Um, yeah, I was so heartbroken that time and I really wanted to give up. So fast forward a, a month after that, We've heard that my company, the company that I'm in right now, has uh, posted that they will be hiring in Cebu. So our instructor already gave us pointers that we need to take note for the application day of the said company that I'm in right now. And everybody is active in the group chat with regards to the preparation apart from me. And then my instructor uh, privately messaged me and asked me if I'm already prepared for the said uh, application day. And I told him, sir, I'm really sorry, but I don't think I am fit for the position because first of all, I was rejected by a domestic local airline. How would I have the confidence to apply for an international five-star airline so i'm really low that time and uh, i would never ever forget his message of encouragement and to make the story short uh big big shout out to queen d thank you so much for pushing me uh to do the application and look at me now i've been three years in this lovely company so thank you thank you so much quindy and yeah that's that's the beginning of the journey towards this company so do you really want to know how <laughs> Do you really, really want to know uh, my journey towards this company? If you do, please do comment down below. Uh, say at least half of my subscriber to comment. Uh, you know, you you want to know my my story or my journey uh, of becoming a flight attendant, what I've been through in the application process and everything. If you want to know that, uh, I'll sure uh, uh, <laughs> I'll sure be glad to make a video about it. If you reach to one no half of my subscriber to comment F A journey, just comment F A journey and I'll give it to you guys. But for now, it's time to enjoy a lovely meal. Mm. <laughs> it's so good. There is no joke on it. It is really good. Since I'm not only three years with the company that I'm in, I'm also celebrating my three years of being 
an OFW. <laughs> so, I'll be sharing with you some of the anecdotes that I have. First is, it's my first time to fly international. It was a long flight, nine hours to be exact. And I really was not that sure about the lavatory. So in that nine long hours, I only used the lavatory once because I'm so scared and I'm so like, uh, uh, where is the lavatory? So I'm trying to like observe people where they go, what they do. And most of the flight, I was asleep because uh, we departed midnight from the Philippines. So it was sleeping time. So I was asleep uh, apart from being asleep, being sleepy because it's midnight. It's because uh, I've been crying, of course. Hello, I was just, I just turned 21 and i don't know where i'm going i just know that i wanted to become a flight attendant but i don't know where i'm gonna live and the picture of um qatar in my mind is just desert where there's camel and it's very hot and uh, it's a muslim country so we're not allowed to show off some skin um, can't wear shorts that I've loved wearing back in the Philippines so there's a lot of things going on in my mind um, thinking if I'll be able to handle the pressure of the training if I'll be able to adjust in the new environment if I'll be able to handle my emotions regarding missing home missing family missing friends if I am able to adjust to the people that will be surrounding me. So there is a lot of anxiety that I was feeling during that time that put me to sleep. And when we landed, when we finally landed into the airport, I was so amazed by their airport because it's so big and there is a lot of aircraft I've seen a lot of aircraft for my first time in my life so I was so just happy and I was like thinking in my brain like oh my gosh Zainab you're finally um, reaching your dreams you finally reach one other country aside from Philippines where you were born and raised so I was so excited and Luckily, I have an aunt staying here and she offered to tour me around when I reached my accommodation and she showed me around and I came by November 4 and it is winter time and take note it is winter time in desert in a desert a country that is known for the desert so i was not expecting that this country could be cold so i just wore a sweatshirt and i'm gonna show you a picture yes you've seen it right that's how i look three years ago oh my gosh i don't know what happened but that's how I looked three years ago and that was what I was wearing when it was about 14 degrees and I swear it's very cold and very windy and I didn't 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 expect it to be that cold because yes I've seen in the pictures um, Qatar is a desert but I never thought that it could be also cold during the winter days i thought it would be cold but not really that cold but i was wrong so those of you people that are planning to migrate in qatar or to work in qatar please take note that this country also have <laughs> this country also have winter season and it could get cold as well so you need to have your jackets ready so those are one of the few things that I could remember during the first days I have in Qatar. And uh, yeah, the first few days were full of excitement. At the same time, 
longing for home, longing for family and friends. Mm. And by the way, guys, speaking of family, so uh, thanks to my beautiful sister, Cami. So please also subscribe her YouTube channel. And thanks for her that they have also um, I they have also prepared a little video uh, video greetings or video message I would say it's like a birthday right it's like a 30 year birthday here in Qatar so let's see what their message for me hmm. I don't want to cry because I'm a strong bold independent women <laughs> so let's look at the video that we prepared hey, Atisai. hello Atisai. congratulations on your three years on qatar good luck and god bless bye bye happy three years in service <laughs> i thought you knew it i know so this past three years that you've been and I know someone eh? like you've reached your dreams and you've been living your dreams for almost I mean almost daily almost for three years now Jude and second tag and ano ay bali wala man tay script na tita gyo yo aning mga ing aning buta dili makanang to pa ko sa una nga kain si tagala ag Kay dream jud mo mong sigla ang sis kila agad ba ako sis then yung mga hashtag na travel na walang ending sis good travel na walang ending jud sis ano sa una kay imo mga laag kay mga locals pa like ato ka og Sikihor, Cebu, Bacolod, Kabangalan, Baes mga ganun ganun lang good sis bisag asa ka malaag sis pa sana all kaya niya wala ka balos mga mga galaag ka ba sana all jud sana all then karon kay maabot na ka og oh, Copenhagen, Bangkok, sa pagali ka lain, sa Paris, sa asa pa man sa Thailand, sa kuan, sa Greece and all jud as in sana all and I'm so happy na na-reach mo mo dreams and tanan nga mo abot nimo nga blessings kay kuan, you really deserve it. Stay strong. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Love you always. Keep safe. Did I pray always? And peace out. Try that. Love you. Bye bye. See you soon. Three years. Three beautiful years uh, that I've been in this industry, in this country. I've seen a lot of places. Places that I've never ever heard before. Just like Tanzania, I've never heard of that. Johannesburg, I have heard of that. Croatia, I've never heard of that. But I've been there and I'm so blessed that I was able to experience all of those beautiful layovers. From the beautiful beaches, down to the safari, to the trek to Mount Batur for our vacation. This company have not just fulfilled my dream to become a flight attendant. For these three years, I was able to help my family. I was able, I was able to achieve one of my dream that it, it, since I was a little, that is to have a home that I could say mine. <laughs> Uh, this this past three years, I was also blessed to meet my boyfriend, who is always there for me and who is my family away from home. <laughs> this career just brought a lot of blessing to my life. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Uh, uh, and. Just to share with you guys, I just came from a flight yesterday, which is November 4 because I'm filming this November 5 because I was so so tired like a zombie. Uh, I, I attempted to film this one yesterday and here's some clip. I am tired. I am sleepy. I am exhausted. 
but I don't want to waste my time. And yep, it just didn't turn out well because I'm so um, tired and exhausted. So yesterday in my flight to Lahore, I was sitting in the R3 jump seat. From Lahore, going back to Doha, there was a man sitting in front of me. And as we took off, I really want to cry in my jump seat because, because he was staring outside the window and he was waving. I don't know. It just <laughs> makes me want to cry. I was really trying so hard. I was really trying so hard not to cry in my jump seat during takeoff because I've seen how sad he was leaving and leaving home is just really sad it just flashed back all those time the time that I was leaving home from the time that I was at the airport I was like crying because I don't want to I don't want my family to see me cry but I thought my grandmother cried so hard when I was about to leave <laughs> it just breaks my heart <laughs> it just breaks my heart seeing seeing her cry <laughs> but I have to leave because I want to fulfill my dreams and I want to help my family. <laughs> but as soon as I reached the aircraft, all I did for that one hour flight was cry. Thinking about my family, my friends. It's just hard to leave home. It's hard to be away from your family it's hard to miss all those special family gathering it's also very hard to celebrate holidays away from them and it's going to be my three years to spend Christmas away from them oh my god <sighs> I said I don't want to cry, I don't want this vlog to be sad because it's uh, we're celebrating, we're supposed to be very happy but why am I crying? three years of being an OFW and yeah we have the perks because uh, we're earning a little bit more than the, peop the people are earning in the Philippines but yeah and this is also a shout out to those people oh uh oh -uh, ito na ayoko na magdrama Shout out to all those people that are always asking for pasalubong from your OFW family member or friend. Guys, please take note that we are not, ano, di po kami mayaman porque nag abroad kami. Di po namin pinupulot yung pera po. Hindi po namin yan pinupulot. Eh, wala nga kayong pinabaon sa amin nung umalis kami. Tapos pag uuwi kami, gusto nyo may pasalubong kayo. Gusto nyo pa ng mga branded. Kaya, Kesyo, mga, ano lang, kesyo, mga, ano lang, bag lang naman, mga perfume na brand. just ko po, mahiya-hiya din naman tayo, ano. Kasi po yung pera po ng mga OFW, pinaghihirapan po yan. Yung iba, most of, most of the countries are paying, uh, paying per hour. So, per hour po yung kinikita ng mga OFW. So, mahiya naman kayo sa ilang oras na pagtatabaw din ng OFW, ano, di ba? But, um, also, <clears throat> if 
you have an OFW family member or friend and you make uta <laughs> and then uh, you expect them not to sing with you anymore mm 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 nang hindi ka na sana wag ka hindi ka na lang sana nangutang kung wala ka din namang planong magbayad diba tapos pag hindi naman kayo pinauutang oh ano na ang dami ng chismis kasi kesho Ah, nag-iba ng ugali kasi mayaman na nakapag-abroad lang iba ng ugali. Guys, guys, guys. Ang OFW ay marami din priorities in their life. And they also have a goal to go home. Kaya nag-iipon po yan. Kaya hindi po yan basta-basta nagpapautang lang. Kaya, ano, pasensyahan lang tayo pag hindi kayo pinautang ng mga OFW friends niyo or family members. So, yun lang. <laughs> Share ko lang. Masingit lang sa utak ko eh. Naalala ko yung pagiging OFW ko. <laughs> Cut our cake. Cut our cake. <laughs> so, I'm so excited to have this one. Uh, it's a black horse cake. And let's go out and eat it. Happy three years! So here's our cake for our three years anniversary. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh. I can really ch taste the cherry. Mm. It's so good. Mmm. This cake, by the way, is from Opera House, and I really love the cakes. This one is so delicious. All I could say is I am really grateful and thankful for the three years that I've been away from home, being an OFW, being a flight attendant, being in this beautiful country, and being in the aviation industry and for growing into the person that i am today so we have reached the end of this video and thank you so much for watching this very video until this very end and for those of you that are watching this and haven't subscribed to my channel please don't forget to like share and subscribe please also don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you will be notified on my next video stay safe and god bless love you gusto mo look asa ko